let's take a look at another quadratic inequality. Now we know this is a quadratic inequality. If I move the 16x to the other side, I get 3x squared minus 16x plus 5 is less than 0. Now according to the steps that we have here for solving this guy, I need to treat it like an equation. And then I solve it well, using quadratic methods. So I want to be able to see it like this. See this as 3x squared minus 16x plus 5 is equal to 0. And when I look at it this way, I want to factor, I want to find those gatekeepers, I want to find those critical values. So let's try to factor this guy. When I factor, the 3x squared breaks down as 3x and x. Both of these guys are negative and I need to use a minus 1 and a minus 5. So from here I get that x is equal to 1 third and from here x equals 5. Now these are my critical values. But instead of doing test intervals, I want to show you something different. And this is all based on the signs. I'm not going to really be plugging in numbers. It's all about looking at the signs of your factors. So down one side of the page, I want to have the factors that I'm curious about. 3x minus 1, x minus 5, that was a calculator, I promise. And then 3x minus 1 times x minus 5. Now I've got some key points already set up here. I have two critical values. I have 1 third and I have 5. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to talk about the signs here, positive or negative. Okay. When you have linear factors with a lead coefficient that's positive, that means on the left side of their critical value, it's negative, and on the right side, it's going to be positive. So 3x minus 1, when does this guy equal 0? He equals 0 right here at 1 third. If you were to plug in values on the left side of this, like 0, negative 1, negative 2, you would get just negative values here. But when you plug in values positive than 1 third, like 1, 2, 3, you get values that are positive all the way over here. Because the only time that this factor changes signs is at one third. That's the only time he has the opportunity to change signs. Likewise here at x minus 5. His gatekeeper is the value of 5. Since this is a positive 1, that means values on the left will be negative and values on the right are going to be positive. If you don't believe me, plug in those numbers that are left of 5. Like 4 gives you a negative. Plug in 0, that's negative. On the right side of 5, like 6 or 7, you get positive values. Now why am I doing these signs? Because that tells me what the sign will be when I multiply these. Because if on this side of 1 third I have negatives from this guy and negatives from that, negative times negative becomes positive. 0 times a negative means you're 0 at 1 third. I already knew that. Positive times negative is negative. Positive times 0 is 0. Positive times positive is, of course, positive. So what I have right here is a sign analysis for this polynomial that I have up here. And of course, that really applies more to this guy right here. This is the one that's important. I have this quadratic inequality, and I want to know where is this guy less than zero. Since I'm looking for where is it less than zero, I'm looking for I'm looking for negative values. So my negative values happen right here. That's where my negative values are. Now see, notice I'm less than but not equal to, so I don't get to include these endpoints. So my interval that is my solution set will be from 1 third to 5 with parentheses. That means anything that's in between 1 third and 5 will be a solution to my original inequality. This is my original inequality up here. I rewrote it to be this guy, and then I converted it to an equation so I could figure out what are those critical values, what are the gatekeepers. 
Once I found the gatekeepers, I was able to identify my intervals, and I just used my signs, used the sign analysis. Now we can check this by graphing. This is the, one of the great things we have here. Now I'm going to go back and look at my original guy. One equation is 3x squared plus 5, and the other guy is 16x. Now I don't think I'm going to get much help here, so we need to change the window. Let's change the window x minimum, let's make that negative 1. x max, let's make that 6. And a y minimum, let's make that 0. And the y max, we're going to make that, just make that 90, see what happens. So there's my, this curve right here is your uh, 3x squared plus 5. And we're about to graph your 16x. So the question, the original question was saying, where is 3x squared plus 5? Where is your parabola, this guy? Where is he less than 16x, which is your line? Remember, if I saw this as y equals here and y equals there, you know what these graphs look like. The square tells you it's a parabola. This x to the first is linear, so that's a line. And you see that this parabola is below the line between x values of one-third and x values of positive five. Now, let's go back and try this with a logic statement. Where is 3x squared plus five? Second test. Where is this guy less than 16x? I'm looking for the, the ones. You can see it show up right here at the bottom. It's kind of difficult to see, and the reason it's difficult is because look at your window. Your window is going from 0 to 90. When you're doing logic statements, you really want to go from 0 to 2. So now let's graph that again. And you can see that between an x value of 1 third and an x value of 5, you get a true statement. And so that definitely matches up with what I said here of 1 third to 5.